Welcome back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. And we're here on the island at the Grand Hotel for the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce's annual policy conference. And uh, old buddy, former MEDC guy, as a matter of fact, that's when we, I think we first started working together. Doug Rothwell is the uh, CEO, right, now for, uh, and still hanging on to that job, right? So excellent stuff. So, so tell me, what's going on? Yeah, well, big, big two issues we're working on, really, Chris, are education and infrastructure, roads. Uh, you know, it's really because we've made so much progress over these last 10 years. I mean, the issues that are left now are those two, and they're tougher issues to some degree to deal with than we've been dealing with because you know, we had to get our fiscal house in order, you know, get tax reform done, things like that, build our businesses back up. But now we got to get the roads fixed and we got to get education fixed. You know, it's interesting because uh, Business Leaders for Michigan has been kind of on the forefront of this. And you saw it when we saw it in our numbers, and that was the shortcoming that we were going to experience in the workforce. And if you don't have a talented workforce, you you don't have much. Well, we need more people that have some level of education and training beyond high school. We need to encourage kids to not stop with a high school degree, and we need to make sure that they're you know also getting more kids with the preparation they need while they're in K-12. And that's one of the things that we're really concerned about, Chris, is that our test scores and all in Michigan have not really gone down, but other states have gone up. And so we're regressing compared to them. And when businesses are deciding where to locate, right, they're going to look for the best talent that they can possibly get. So it's why education reform becomes a really hot issue right now. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, you also have to bear in mind some of the urban schools that suffer because not necessarily the school system but you know what's being fed into the school system in many cases that that's an issue too so this initiative that we put together last year is called launch michigan and it includes philanthropy business uh education leaders and the idea is just what you said it's not about casting blame it's about what do we need to do to fix the problem going forward and i can't think of an issue more than education that touches so many parts of society right i mean if a kid comes to school from a a neighborhood where they don't have support, a family that's broken, they don't get the nutrition that they need. How are they going to be successful in school? We can't blame educators for that. That's something we all have to own. No, you're absolutely right. And when your district is scoring high and you look at who's living there, they're the doctors and the lawyers and the CEOs. Well, and the thing we find in Michigan is even in some of our best performing districts, they're not performing as well as the best performing districts in other states. So it's not something that I want people to feel like, well, if we just fix Detroit or Flint or Pontiac, it's fixed. It's not. It's a statewide issue that we've got to get at. And that's what we're going to talk about today at the conference. Well, and not only that, the fact that we're competing globally, you know, I mean, because education is a top priority for a lot of other countries. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And, and I think that it's something that... Uh, Again, if we can learn from what other states have done that have faced similar challenges, what they did is they had a common playbook. In Michigan, we have not been all on the same page about how to fix the problem. We've tried to do it from the top down. We now need to try to get everybody on the same page and around some common themes and move forward. All right, so what's uh, you've got education. What was the other major initiative? Oh, roads. We've got to fix yeah. the roads, and the governor's right. And, and look, at I, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money to do this. We let it go for too long. Uh, it's not popular to want to raise taxes on anybody, but the time has come. And I think the great thing is by getting no-fault reform done, it's going to save people money. If we can use some of those savings, it's going to really help us a lot to then fix the roads problem. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. Well... You know, the, the problem is when you get to a maintenance schedule, because we, we, we can get to a maintenance schedule, but how do we get over this big hump because we're so far behind? Right. And it's going to, you know, again, we're not going to fix this overnight, just like we're not going to fix education overnight, Chris, but we got to get at it. And we the, the bottom line is all the studies show that we need at least $2 billion of new revenue to fix it. And we got to do it where we don't just rob Peter to pay Paul, which is to say, let's take money away from education or job training or other things that we need resources for. Let's, the users of the infrastructure ought to pay for this. Whether that's a gas tax, whether that's something else, you know, we're flexible. But the bottom line is now's the time to do it, especially now that no fault got done. Yeah. Doug, tell me, you're, 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 you had the genius to start this thing. It was pretty incredible. And 
Are your are your members holding up? I guess I'm trying to say, is everybody that left the dock still on board? Absolutely. I mean, I think that Michigan business community is probably more engaged than I've ever seen them, Chris. And I think it's the positive momentum that's been built this last decade. I mean, people are charged up about Michigan. They feel like we're back in the game again because we are, and they feel like we can be even better. Uh, look, it's like anything when you're trying to improve, right? It's easy to get in the game. It's harder to get to be the top of the game. But the fact is we've given our ch ourselves a chance to get there. And so I, the business leaders that are on my board, they're all in. Listen, I, I don't blame him for being all in. You're a great guy to follow, and you've done a marvelous job. Doug, it's been a pleasure watching you. Well, Chris, you know, it's been a fun ride, and people like you have done a lot to help make this business climate what it is, too. We're, we're all chipping in, right? Okay. That's the point. Okay. Exactly. Doug Rothwell, CEO of Business Leaders for Michigan. You're uh, listening and watching the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman from the Grand Hotel, and the policy conference put on by the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce will be right back.